Hi, welcome back uh, to my channel. So here I'm playing with my new uh, Siglent uh, oscilloscope SDS 1202XE, which is a 200 megahertz oscilloscope. It is my first uh, digital uh, oscilloscope and uh, it's very nice because you can do something that uh, would have been not so easy to do with uh, uh, an analog uh, oscilloscope, of course. So today I thought, so I was reading this, uh, this book, um, which is very nice, it's about Fourier series. So this is the math behind all the harmonics uh, things that we have in uh, RF, of course. Uh, so it's written by this uh, Russian uh, famous uh, professor. This is on a translation uh, uh, to English. And so the book is uh, mathematically oriented and uh, so it's not uh, oriented towards applications, but uh, it's very nice. One, one uh, nice aspect of mathematica, the mathematical approach is that it's very formal so it's very precise it's not a more or less uh, approach it's a pure math and so i really like this book anyway so i thought i could uh, explain to myself a couple of things uh, in a practical way uh, using uh, uh, the oscilloscope and yeah i like to do these videos also to keep track of what i learn uh, over time because of course this is an hobby for me i forget things if i'm not uh, uh, doing this uh, in a repeated way so from time to time I like to go back to my old videos and, and see what at some point I learned anyway so let's see what uh, let's say let's see what I want to say in this video about uh, Fourier series uh, so the, the, the idea of the Fourier series is pretty simple and intuitively speaking so uh, the basic idea is that um, the one of uh, vectors that we all know so for example here we have the Cartesian plane so two dimensions and every vector, so this uh, green line, can be projected into the axis, right? So for example, this uh, vector V is projected uh, here on this point on the x-axis and on this point on the y-axis. And so if uh, these are our uh, unit uh, length, so let's say one uh, meter, one centimeter, one whatever, uh, one of length, uh, in the x direction here we have about uh, four uh, steps here instead in the vertical direction we have the two steps so we can say that v is four steps to the right and two steps up right so and of course every, every vector admits uh, such a unique uh, decomposition and the situation is very similar in the, in the context of uh, signals so instead of in, instead of instead of vectors we are talking about uh, periodic functions so here I have my periodic function f. So the period in math is zero to pi, but you know it could be whatever, whatever period uh, you like, really. Um, and so it's a periodic function. It starts somewhere, it does something uh, for the period, and then it repeats itself forever, right? And instead, uh, so if very similarly to the to the vector situation where we could uh, project vector in uh, in two components, here we can project uh, any signal into uh, many components in fact there are infinitely many one is one so basically the dc level of the signal and then we have uh, basically all these uh, components so the cosine uh, and the sine and then the cosine uh, twice faster so the second harmonic basically and similarly for sine cosine sine for the third harmonic etc right and again, we can express uh, the fact that this vector of this uh, signal, um, periodic signal F, is obtained by basically the weights that uh, are present in each of these uh, basis uh, signals. So yeah, these uh, things are called uh, the basis of this uh, vector space, right? In a very similar way, these uh, uh, basic uh, signals trigonometric function are the basis for this space of all possible signals and so uh, basically we sum up the weights of uh, these uh, basic components uh, that f has and we obtain our f in a very very similar to the vector so um, how do we compute these uh, these projection these weights for each component well the mathematical way to to do that uh, is this mathematical expression okay so uh, it might look a bit complicated but the point is that this ai or bi is the same really is obtaining by computing the integral over the, the period that we are considering so from 0 to 2 pi so we multiply the f that you are looking at and we multiply it by cosine i x okay if it was bi we would multiply instead by sine i x 
And so the integral of uh, this, uh, which is basically the area, is AI. It's linearly proportional to the AI because technically speaking, we need to divide by one over pi, but that's just a mathematical technicality. Okay, so this is a bit uh, the math. And just one example that everybody knows, that of a square wave. The square wave contains components on every single uh, odd sign harmonic, okay? And ze zero in, uh, in, everything, in everything else. So I thought uh, that uh, I could uh, check this uh, with, uh, with the oscilloscope. And so I'm using my signal generator to generate two signals. Uh, one is the square wave, so the function that I'm, I really want to explore we, uh, what components it has. And then I can uh, basically generate uh, uh, the basis uh, uh, signals. So, for example, sine x, uh, sine 3x, uh, but more generally, I can generate all these uh, signals and check uh, what is their uh, corresponding coefficient, so the result of the integral. Okay? So, let's see what uh, we have on this scope right now. So, let me uh, start first. Uh, um, let's see this way. So here, as you can see, I have uh, the signal that I'm looking at, what, what, what they called the F, okay? So it's uh, this square wave, it starts from here. So this is the point zero. You have the cursor here to mark this point zero. Uh, so let me see if I can focus slightly better, but it's not really important to read what's written in the oscilloscope, just to, to see the graph. Okay. So anyway, so this is our square wave, okay? And the period is uh, this, delimited by the, the vertical cursors. And uh, the zero uh, axis is here, okay? This horizontal axis. And now I want to check uh, what is the component of, uh, I mean, what is the projection of the square wave in the sine x uh, um, uh, basis uh, function, uh, trigonometric function. So uh, the sine x function is here. You see, this is a sine wave sine x so it just do it just does uh, one um, you know the, the period is uh, one as you can see and so to understand what is uh, the component here i have to cal calculate the integral of uh, uh, f so the purple line the square wave multiplied by uh, the sine so i can calculate with uh, with the oscilloscope automatically the multiplication of these two signals and it is this uh, uh, you know curve here and it makes sense right so when uh, the sine is basically multiplied here by just by one uh, the square uh, wave and, um, and when it goes down the same sign is multiplied by minus one so it reverses uh, uh, the sign so it becomes positive so the, w the overall integral is the area of here and the area of here and they are both positives, so they are positive because they are above x, and so there is a, a positive integral here. And so we say that indeed, the, the, we see that uh, the square wave indeed has a positive component with respect to sine x. Right, so let me disable now the multiplication. So now let me consider instead sine 2x, right? So this is a, an even harmonic, sine 2x. So you see, now we have the sine, but it does two evolutions for, for one period. So this is sine 2x. And so let's see uh, the multiplication. And you see that, uh, I mean, I don't know if the colors are very clear with this camera, but the multiplication basically uh, is this yellow line that does this. Well, uh, let me use the pen here. So uh, it starts there, it goes up, goes down and then does like that and so the area in this case is zero you see because basically this part this area here is cancelled out by this part they are equal uh, it's clear uh, it's cancelled out because this is negative and this negative is cancelled by this positive so the overall integral is uh, zero and so basically this uh, second harmonic, second sine harmonic, has zero, uh, so the square wave has zero energy on the second harmonic. That's our way of putting it. So let's see that with the third harmonic. Um, so if we look at the third harmonic, we see that there is uh, some positive energy, right? So it's uh, because here we have a positive, here we have a negative, so the two cancel each other. Uh, here I have a positive, 
and here we have a negative the two cancel each other but here we have a positive right so uh, there is a positive sum in this integral and therefore uh, indeed the square have a square wave has uh, this uh, a positive energy so that's a way to really calculate uh, the, the 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 amount of the third harmonic in a square wave and again if i go to the to the fourth harmonic indeed uh, i see that it has uh, the integral is zero so if i do the summation it goes to zero and if i consider the fifth harmonic it is going to have this co extra component which ma makes uh, the sum uh, positive and so this confirms our um, I mean, mathematical fact that uh, um, the square wave uh, contains energy in every uh, odd sign harmonic. So let's see what happens with the, um, with the cosine instead. So let me try to generate a cosine. Um, so that's not, I have to put 90 degree. Yeah, so this is a, um, uh, let me see if I'm doing things correctly. Uh, so is this, uh, I'm supposed to generate, a yeah, exactly. So let me uh, remove the map. Yeah, so this is our cosine, right? It starts from there and it does its uh, one period. So let's, uh, let's compute the integral of the product of uh, the square wave with the cosine. And you can see, okay, here we have a positive part that is compensated so it goes to zero uh, with this part positive and negative so the integral is zero and therefore the square wave does not contain any energy on cosine of the first harmonic so let's see um, the second harmonic just out of curiosity and uh, i mean the colors are not very visible but uh, anyway here yeah so basically this part and this part are compensated by this part and um, this part and this part uh, i mean this part and this part compensate that part so again the integral is zero which indeed means that the square wave does not contain any energy on uh, cosine for the first third second and then in fact every harmonic so we can just check this uh, uh, visually uh, it's very simple actually and um, and so something pretty interesting uh, the last thing i want to say is uh, that um, you know well, if we go back to 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 our original intuition vectors and bases in the Cartesian plane, um, so these vectors are orthogonal. Okay, so uh, this means basically that uh, the blue com uh, so the vertical component of this red vec vector is zero, and vice versa the horizontal component of this vertical vector is zero. Okay, so this means that blue has a zero energy in red and vice versa, intuitively. And so this is a fact uh, that is true also for the basis, uh, the trigonometric basis that we are talking about in Fourier series. So in particular, uh, this harmonic has zero uh, energy in this harmonic or vice versa. And so they are mutually uh, orthogonal. Okay, and so to, to check that, uh, let me see what I can do. Um, so instead of looking at a square wave, let's, let's consider, for example, here. So let me go back to the uh, scope, sorry. So before we had a look at uh, uh, the square wave, right? So let me now change it and just, let, just make it a, a sine wave. Okay. And so we have uh, here, uh, for example, we have, uh, um, so let me see. Um, so yeah, we, we are multiplying this sine wave and uh, we are multiplying it now by, so we want to see what, what is the energy uh, of this sine wave in the, this cosine 2x wave, okay? And so let's see the, the multiplication so we can see um, the integral. And the integral is zero, so indeed, uh, uh, basically they are orthogonal, right? So uh, wh when integral is zero, it means that there is no energy um, in that component, because as you can see, these uh, these two little spikes here are compensated by these two negative little spikes, and this big uh, spike here is compensated by that. So I'm afraid you cannot see the colors very well. Uh, 
due to some camera things but anyway so the point that we just established is that uh, um, is that uh, sign uh, x and uh, uh, sorry yeah sine x and cosine 2x are orthogonal they do not have uh, energy in each other um, right so let's go back here a second so basically experimentally we just check that uh, um, sine 2x uh, let me see here sine 2x um, so we, no, sorry we just checked that sine x uh, and cosine 2x uh, so these uh, two things are orthogonal to each other right however it is interesting to have a look at uh, uh, for example cosine x so what is the energy of cosine x uh, in itself well it cannot be zero right so the idea is that cosine uh, I mean any uh, basic component should not be orthogonal to itself otherwise uh, we would be in trouble and so let's see if it, this is uh, indeed um, indeed the case uh, so I'm basically going to now multiply uh, so let me see let me show you to you. Now we have uh, basically, I'm multiplying this uh, sine x, uh, which is the purple thing, um, with uh, also itself basically, right? So it's now completely, the, the two uh, waves are overlapping. So let me do the math. And as you can see, the product is positive, which makes sense, right? Because we are multiplying positive by positive makes positive and negative by negative makes negative and so the overall integral is positive which means that indeed uh, sine x or uh, i mean uh, sine x has energy in itself which which makes sense so um yeah so basically this is how you can compute with an oscilloscope uh, the harmonic uh, components in your signals really you just need to multiply uh, a given f by cosine or sine of any harmonics uh, and calculate the integral i mean uh, the oscilloscope in fact this oscilloscope has also has an integral function that can compute you in the number but the, the resulting number that you get from integral is proportional really to the energy contained in that uh, in that harmonic so anyway i thought uh, this was a pretty interesting thing to to, to show um, primarily to myself um, that's it I see you next time. Bye-bye.